Hey guys, my name is Victoria. I am a yoga instructor and fitness junkie here in Fort Worth, Texas, and I am adjusting to working out from home. So today I'm teaming up with So Worth Loving to do our workout Wednesday, and I'm going to be doing a circuit workout. We're going to repeat the circuit, the full circuit three times, and then we're going to do a little bit beforehand, a little warm up and post workout, we'll do a little cool down. So I'm excited. All you need is a mat. Um, if you don't have a mat, just grab a large towel or just work out on a softer surface um, as to not hurt your knees. We're going to get in child's pose first. So bring your knees to the outside edges of your mat. Bring your toes together to touch behind you and slightly walk your hands out to the top of your mat and rest your forehead down on your mat and just breathe. This will help open your shoulders, open your hips. Just start warming up your body to get open and ready. All right, let's walk up to tabletop pose. Let's go into a cat cowl. Bring your belly down to the ground, your booty up high to the sky, and glance up to the ceiling or as high as you possibly can. And then arch your back slowly, bring your gaze to your navel. I'm gonna do this one more time. Look up to the sky, drop your belly down low, and gaze back to your navel. All right, now that we're done with that, we're gonna walk back into a downward facing dog and start to bring some movement to the back of your calves and the back of your legs. Press your chest close to your thighs as close as possible. Look up to your hands, bring your feet to your hands, grab onto your opposite elbows, let your head and neck hang heavy. This starts to stretch out and warm up the back of your neck, the lower spine, the top part of your spine, and even your calves here. If you really bring your weight up to the bones of your feet, you'll start to feel that in your calves. All right, and slowly bring your hands down to the mat and start to curl up to a stand. We're ready to go. We're gonna start um, standing first with a squat pulse variation. So bring your feet hip width distance apart, toes facing forward, and we're gonna drop it down. You can bring your hands together to your side, whatever feels right here. I always put my hands together when I squat. And drop it low, pulse, and up. And squeeze your booty at the top. Two. The biggest um, thing to remember in a squat is always to keep your chest up, if at all possible, and your back as straight as possible. Starting to warm up that booty. In 15. We're going to go into lying on our back. So, Lie on your back, bring your legs to a tabletop position. We're going to go into tabletop crunches. We're going to do 12 of these. So bring your hands behind your neck. You can interlace them, whatever feels comfortable. Interlace your hands, bring your feet up um, to a reverse tabletop. Engage your core here as much as possible. And we're gonna start with going to the right. One. Two, bring your opposite elbow to your opposite knee. Three, four, try not to bring your knee any closer to you. Try to simply bring your elbow up to your knee. As you're crunching, 
audibly exhale. And you're gonna feel it most when you pull the farthest your elbow, the farthest you can to your knee. You'll really feel, feel it in that side oblique, like I'm feeling it now. Um, and instead of just simply going like this, you won't feel it as much. So really try to bring your um, elbow as close as you can to your knee without like, of course, moving way too far and moving your hips side to side. All right, now bring your knees in tight. After I do any type of ab core workout, I always like to massage my lower back a little bit by rocking back and forth. All right, and now let's gain a little bit of momentum and come into a tabletop the other way around. So your wrists are right underneath your shoulders here. And we're gonna start with 10 donkey kicks each side. So engage your core here. And a lot of times in donkey kicks, it's, it's easier, honestly, to start with like a pelvis that's not engaged and to kick as high as you possibly can. But to really feel it, we're going to engage our pelvis, kind of lock our pelvis in, make a straight back as much as possible, and just kick until you feel your booty contract. So one, two, three, you feel it a lot more when you do this. Four, seven, eight, nine, all right, the other side. Same thing here, just in, keep your pelvis locked in. We will really feel it a lot more. And you're engaging this little tiny muscle that's right underneath your glute, and you want to engage your glute as you kick up. All right, now we're going to do 10 fire hydrants on each side. Again, with this one as well, um, actually we're gonna do a fire hydrant kick on each side. Again, with locking in your pelvis and going out, kick, coming back in, out, kick, in. See how my back is as neutral as possible. You can bring your shoulder down. Sometimes I feel like that makes it easier for me. You don't have to really engage your arms here. It's more working your booty and your core. Don't forget to breathe. Do it on the other side. I almost forgot what I was about to do. All right. One, kick, bring it back in. Out, kick, back in. Three, Four, five, six, seven. Do you see me shaking? Eight, nine, ten. I always feel feel these the next day. Like a donkey kick and fire hydrant variation is rough. Um, all right, now we're going to go into a plank and uh, bring your feet hip width distance apart for this one. Your arms shoulder width distance apart and bring your shoulders right over your wrist here. And we're going to do a Spider-Man plank. We're going to do 12. So bring your right knee up, opposite elbow. Or for even a better, reach your um, knee right above your elbow. I'm starting to shake already. All right, one, I already did two, so three, four, five. If your knee doesn't touch, that's okay. Just get it as close as possible to your tricep. Eight, nine, 10. Amazing. Oh, that's rough. I always. 
feel those right away. Like on the second one, I'm like, well, is this going to be over soon? But those are amazing to do. So let's repeat this circuit three times and then we'll do a little cool down. All right, going back to the squat pulse. Oop, I didn't do the pulse. When you engage your, um, when you engage your glutes, when you're coming up, just make sure not thrust your hips forward. Simply um, engage, just engage your glutes and that will kind of thrust your hips forward a little bit, but not abnormally so. so. <laughs> Gotta work on the form. The, the pulse, it gets me every time. All right, and one more. All right, let's go to, down to a tabletop. We're gonna do 12 crunches. You can keep your, your shoulders up the whole time or bring them all the way back down to the mat whatever you prefer. It's a challenge both ways. Some days I feel like one is more challenging than the, challenging than the other. Other days, I feel like they're both challenging different muscles so, in your core, so engage your core here. Don't forget to exhale on the crunch. Starting to get sweaty, all right? Come up to tabletop. Go into those donkey kicks. Your range of motion is not going to be that huge in these if you're doing them correctly, so don't worry if your knee can't go up very high. Other uh, leg. Sun. You could always put some fun tunes on in the background. Tunes, I don't know why I said that. Music on in the background. So that and keep you kind of motivated. All right, dump a fire hydrant to kick. Right. 
like 600 in mouth. Now one more time around and we'll get to a cool down. You guys are doing great. I can't see you, but I just know. If you're powering through this, you're doing a great job. All right, squat pulls. 15 of these. stopping at 10 just kidding it's actually 15 I knew that I'm not trying to shortcut promise I'm already starting to sweat so all right let's go down to a reverse tabletop knees over your hips hands behind your head and 12 of these engage your core during these sometimes you can forget but sometimes I can forget but engaging your core here will give you a little extra core work while you're doing this and will help you not put any unnecessary strain on your lower back and let's go to the other side ten of these left and it is the spider-man plank so let's go back into a plank only have 12 of these give it your very 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 best one two let's try to do impeccable form this round three 
I know you're tired. Four. But try to reach your knee higher up above your elbow. Five. Six. Engage your core. Seven. Eight. Almost there. Nine. Ten. You're doing great. Eleven. And twelve. Whew. Man, feeling it. I'm sweating, if you can't tell from here. I might just look like listening. All right, so we're gonna do a little cool down. So let's sit on our backs, or lay on our backs, actually, not sit on our backs. Let's lay down on our backs. Whew. And grab onto both knees, pull them in tight. Bring your knees or bring your feet down to the mat, hip width distance apart. Bring your right foot over and across your left. And we're just gonna stay right here for the stretch. It's a hip opening, opening your right hip. So you can bring your hands down to the mat, whatever feels good on your belly. Um, if you want a deeper stretch here, bring your foot, your left foot up and grab on kind of like on the inside here and grab onto your shin and pull your shin even closer to you. Uh, the key here is to flex both of your feet to protect your joints. So if you're flexing both of your feet, you can bring it as close as it feels comfortable, but otherwise stay planted on the ground. If this feels like a good enough stretch for your body today, leave it at that, no need to push it. All right, let's go on the other side, the left side. Start to deepen your breaths here. I'm also going to flex my feet here and bring my knee in a little bit closer like I did on the other side. If you try any stretch on one side, a good rule of thumb is to even it out by stretching out the other side. One side might feel better than the other side, but regardless, it's super important to even out both sides. All right. All right, we're done with that stretch. Let's bring our feet or our knees into our chest, go into happy baby pose, which is a super fun yoga pose. Grab on to your opposite ankles. Um, or feet, the bottoms of your feet, whatever feels comfortable, and pull your legs out to a, a comfortable place. Flex your feet where your um, where your ankles are right above your knees, and glue your lower back down to the mat. Stretch out those inner hips. You can sway side to side if your back, if your low back is still on the mat. Bring your knees in, hug them into your chest, squeeze them tight. You can bring your head up to your knees, really feel that in the lower back. And come up to a seat, and we're done. Thank you so, so much for working out with me today for Workout Wednesday with So Worth Loving. It was such an honor to guide you guys through the workout and I tried to piece together some of my favorite workouts, some of the uh, moves that make me feel it the most the next day or and during. So if you're feeling it super hardcore tomorrow, you might wanna just stretch a little bit extra, give your body a little extra love, drink plenty of water today. And if you feel like you want a harder workout, you didn't break a sweat as much as you hoped, you can repeat the circuit a couple more times or you could try maybe to do it faster. Um, also an option is to throw in like two minute mountain climbers or high knees. So hope that helps. There is no better time than the present to start a workout routine. Not having equipment is not a problem. You don't have to have equipment to have an awesome killer workout routine. I'm going to be posting some more videos like this in the future, so if you wanna follow along on my yoga and fitness journey, just head over to my Victoria Explores Instagram. I'll see you over there. Have a great rest of your day and happy quarantine. Bye. I'm just kidding.
Bye. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm done.